Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Building Custom Widgets Workshop. Um, my name is Sophia Ozelkin. Um, I'm going to be walking you through today um, how to build a custom widget. Um, I'm a technical account manager here at Duda. I'm actually coming up on my one year anniversary, and I help um, our account management team and their clients with any um, technical questions and technical needs, such as API and implementation projects, um, webhooks, and onboarding. Uh, research and of course anything that has to do with the widget builder. So today I want to walk you through how to um, use a Duda widget, the Duda widget builder. Um, and here's our agenda. So we're going to go over what the custom widget builder is. I'm going to go through a brief demo um, on how to build a custom widget, and then we're going to have a short Q and A session afterwards. So as many of you know, uh, Duda widgets are built uh, with rows and columns, and we use widgets to style and customize uh, your site. Um, Duda has lots of widgets like text and image, um, but we also have some more industry-specific widgets like um, open table and restaurant menu for the food industry, or the coupon and PayPal widget for e-commerce. Before diving into the demo, I do want to show you a few examples of widgets. Um, get to the right page. Um, these uh, widgets were actually built on Duda sites using the widget builder. So here's our first example. Um, here we have a site for a band called The National. If we scroll down here, we can see a Spotify playlist of all the tracks on their most recent album. Um, the great thing about this widget here is it is actually used building a custom template. So the agency that built this site, um, they actually sell it to a lot of artists and they're able to uh, use the uh, a custom widget within the template. They simply place the widget on their template, and um, each time that they build a new site, they can quickly um, just log into their Spotify because they integrated the widget to the Spotify API and um, populate a playlist for the artist. This helps really well with promotion. Um, here I have another example of a real estate company. If I scroll down here, um, I have a grid uh, that shows some housing house listings with price, um, some images, and some house information, such as bedrooms, number of baths, and square footage. Up here, we have a um, search field that actually filters out this grid system. So this grid is actually tied to collections, and this custom widget is using this filter over here to um, filter out any data from the um, collection and actually display anything that meets the visitor's needs. Um, I also have an, a last example here for a uh, Irish luxury day tour um, company. And here they have a widget that allows users to actually book a tour for a, whis uh, for a whiskey tour. Um, so here they can choose the number of participants, the date. Um, and the great thing about this widget is it's not just industry specific. This can be used on various sites um, through various industries for different experiences and different tours that people might want to book. So a lot of uh, something that I get asked a lot about um, is why use the custom widget builder over HTML widget or developer mode? And there are a few reasons. Um, the first is if you have a lot of code that you're going to be using. It's very difficult um, whenever you're putting a lot of code on a site if you have to go to developer mode and search through a bunch of code, especially if you have to make changes. Um, you also have to store that code externally, and each time that you need to add that to a site, you're going to have to find that on your external source, go to the site and copy and paste, or make any changes. Also, if you're going to be using this code over and over again, whether it's on the same site or different sites, um, it's very simple if you have it all living in one place within the widget builder, um, rather than having to go into developer mode or HTML and adding a new widget each time or adding code on different pages. And re another reason uh, it's beneficial to use the custom widget builder is if you have the same base code, but you need to make alterations for content or design. Um, if you're going into actual code within developer mode and say you want to just change a CSS or um, an input HTML tag, uh, you might accidentally remove a quotation mark or you might have a misspelling that can break your entire code. That's going to cost you some time when you're debugging. Uh, the last reason I would say is if you have a client that's going to be in the editor. Um, when you're selling these sites, if you have a client and you just give them some code, they might not actually know what to do with that. Um, your client might be in the real estate industry, for example, have never seen HTML or CSS. Um, having a widget that they can just drag in and customize through a content and design menu is a better UI and UX experience for them. 
So I want to show you what we're going to be building today. So here we actually see a mortgage calculator on a real estate site that I built. This mortgage calculator has a basic form, some placeholder information, and if I insert any data into this, I get um, a nice pretty chart that shows up once I hit the calculate button. We have a legend here and a button. So it's very simple and has the same basic inputs that you would see uh, with any, anything that you build on a data site. Here's another example of that same calculator that I've already filled out. You can see that the text is aligned in the center. We have different font colors and the chart, and they match the site's theme. You can also see that I actually added an additional button here, and that was built using conditional logic that I'll show you how to build out later. So um, the great thing about custom widgets, as I mentioned before, is that you can create one and can customize it for a client or a site to make it feel like it belongs to that site and make it its own. So let's dive into the widget builder and actually go through how we're going to be building this. So here is the um, dashboard. Uh, you're actually going to access the uh, widget builder by going to the team section and hitting widget builder. This is going to open up a widget dashboard where you're going to have a lot of information about all the widgets on your account and you're going to hit create new widget. The name that you actually place in this field is going to display within um, the site editor. So uh, you can use a placeholder, which we're going to do today, and I'll show you how to change this later. So I'm just going to call this mortgage calc, and I'm going to hit start building. Cool. So let's go back to our widget. Here we can see um, a preview of our widget, um, and uh, we're going to see that this has is a basic form. Uh, right here we have an H2 tag um, and a uh, input field as we saw before, and our legend. Also here we have a content and design menu, and any changes that I make to this content menu is actually gonna be reflected within the actual widget. So we can see those changes here. So now we're gonna walk through actually building these three sections. So let's go to the widget builder and look at the code. And I'm actually gonna grab the HTML from a widget that's already built. Okay, so let's paste that in there. So here we can see we just have basic HTML. You can see that H2 saying mortgage calculator um, that we saw on the, the top of the form. And we can see some form HTML tags with some inputs. So as I mentioned, I use standard HTML to build um, out the uh, widget. But let's look at where this widget builder actually gives you flexibility that you might not have in developer mode or a standard text editor. So let's scroll down to line 30. Here we can see an input HTML field um, for the down payment percentage that someone might input into the calculator. It looks pretty standard until you get to this placeholder attribute all the way on the right. Here we can see that we have curly brackets and this variable called down percent. Um, what this variable and these handlebars are doing are they are actually it's the variable that actually connects to the input from the content editor. This allows for users to make the widget customizable and have that value actually go into the HTML. So if I go back here, I can see that changing the value in the default down percentage from 10 to 20, maybe to 30, actually makes that change within the code and HTML, but it's displayed within my widget. Handlebars can be used for um, things like links, text, buttons, and conditional logic. It doesn't actually have to be content that's displayed on your site. Um, so if I scroll down to line 45, here I can see that I have an A tag with an href. This A tag represents um, this link within the widget. And it's a link for users to access a website um, that has interest rates. Uh, so say you have a client that actually doesn't know what interest rate they should put in, input into the field. They can click here and get more information. But maybe you want to change the uh, rate link based on the type of mortgage. So if you're going to be um, making this calculator for an FHA loan or a VA loan, you might want to link to those various uh, resources. So here on this A tag, I have this href here um, with those handlebars and a variable called rate link. And if you look at um, my content menu here, I can choose the link that I want to input here. Um, or I can have this link to an existing page, similarly to how the link picker works within the actual site editor. 
So how do I actually build those fields that you see within the content menu here? Let's go over to the content editor field and build those out together. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually hit add input. I'm gonna get a drop down here of all the fields that I have available. So let's start with the down payment percentage placeholder. Since I'm gonna be taking an input of text from a user, I'm gonna hit text and I'm gonna actually go back to my HTML and go to line 30 and grab this variable that I have here. I'm gonna go back there and drop that then. I'm also gonna add a descriptive label, label so that users know what they're setting the value for. Here I have this toggle that allows me to enable this field to connect to data. If I toggle this on, this can connect to any um, information within the content library or within a uh, collection. So I'm gonna toggle that on. I can set a default value. I'm gonna set that to 20. And then I have some other options here, such as adding tooltip, placeholder, and I can make this required field as well. I'm also gonna add a link input for that link that I showed you. So I'm gonna go back to my HTML, go to that line on line 45 and grab that variable. I'm gonna go back to the content editor, drop that in, and I'm gonna create a descriptive label. And I'm also gonna define this to connected data. So now let's take a look at what that actually looks like within our widget preview. I'm gonna hit save and hit widget preview. We can see we have an ugly form here. That's not exactly what our final product will look like. But in the content menu, you can see those two fields that we added. And we can see how changing from 10, uh, 20 to 10 actually shows up in the form. Awesome. So as I mentioned, you can use handlebars for conditional logic. So let's switch over back to our uh, widget. And I'm actually going to switch over to this widget in a more completed state. So. If I go back here, I have my HTML, and I'm going to scroll down all the way to line 142. Over here, we have um, handlebars that are using our button, our handlebars for button um, logic. And what's great about this is that using this over a button um, HTML tag actually uh, inherits global design. So any elements that are going to be loaded on your widget using handlebars um, will inherit any global design that you've set on your site. Um, and this helps uh, with speed up um, site design. Uh, you can obviously also um, customize the button if you choose to allow uh, to add that in the design editor and have that individually customized like you would on any other widget within the site. But one thing I do want to point out uh, is on uh, line 146. I have some handlebars here for conditional logic. Um, I had handlebars wrapping this if statement. So if contact lender and contact lender is our variable, I'm gonna show this a tag and this a tag is wrapping a custom button. So um, what does this actually look like within the widget? I'm gonna go back to my widget preview and I'm gonna look at my content menu. I can see that I have this toggle here and when I toggle it on, I can see that a button actually appears within my widget to contact the lender. And I can link this to any link. Um, I can link it to an email or click to call like I would within the actual standard uh, widget for other sites. So how did I actually make that toggle tie to this conditional logic within the HTML? Let's go to the content editor and take a look at how I actually set up this input. So here's the content editor. I've added some additional text inputs similarly, similarly to how we set up the default down payment percentage field. I'm gonna go down to this toggle. This input type of toggle is what I use here. And I set it to that variable contact lender that you see within my conditional logic of that it's if statement. Um, I gave it a descriptive label such as content lender button. So whenever someone toggles that on, they know that they're gonna be enabling the contact lender button. I set the default value to off and I'm always gonna be showing it. I also added that link picker for the actual link that will appear and be tied to that button that pops up when that toggle is turned on. So if I, um, I took that lender link variable and I gave it a descriptive, um, a descriptive label, 
and I enabled this to connect to data so that if I do choose to use this on a site that I want to tie to my content library, I can tie to a phone number or email address. I made this a required field. And what I did down here is instead of having it show always, I decided to show this field only if that contact lender, which is the variable tied to the toggle, is set to true. Cool. So um, one thing I do want to mention is those variables um, that you see within those handlebars are not only accessible in HTML. You can access them with, uh, in data within uh, the JavaScript. So let's go to the JavaScript section. Um, before I actually jump into the code here, I do want to mention that all due to sites come with jQuery. So you can uh, automatically start using jQuery and its functions without having to load the library within the JavaScript. Another thing I want to point out is if you are going to be loading any libraries, um, each time that you load a widget on your site, so for example, say we load this mortgage calculator on a site uh, three times, um, any libraries that I actually put in this code will load on my site three times. So if you know you're going to be using a library, I would recommend putting it in the body end of any templates that you create um, or having some conditional logic within your widget that checks to see if the script already exists and if not, to add it to um, the body end of the site. Cool. So let's roll to line 82 and take a look at some JavaScript. So here we can see that I have um, some conditional logic for my home insurance input field. So going back to the widget preview, that's actually this field over here. Um, with inputs from HTML, you can grab the value using JavaScript by targeting the value field. But what if um, you have someone who just ended up using the um, standard input and placeholder that was set in that field? Or um, maybe you have a widget that actually doesn't take input from a user, but the value was set within the content menu. The great thing about Java, the JavaScript um, is that you can use our data.config object. And the data.config object has access to all of the variables that have been set within the content menu. So any data that was set within the content menu or the design menu can be accessed by using data.config and that dot the variable name um, that you have assigned to the content editor field. So let's go back to our widget preview and take a look. If I take the homeowner insurance placeholder, like I've done with any other field, and I change that, we can see that this change is actually being accessed um, through the HTML. And then when it, the calculation is actually being done, the JavaScript is taking my data.config object, uh, data object dot uh, insurance uh, variable and using that to make the calculation. So like I said, the great thing is that the data.config object allows you to access content menu data within uh, the JavaScript. Okay, so let's jump over to um, CSS next. So the CSS um, has three sections. We have global CSS, desktop, desktop CSS, and mobile CSS, um, which is device specific, similarly to how it is in um, a due to site editor. Any CSS that you know uh, should be applied to um, all widgets should be um, thrown into the CSS section. And anything that you know you want to be uh, device specific, you just uh, throw into the device um, CSS. So if I go to my widget preview, I've been showing you the desktop version, but I can toggle over to mobile and you can see it looks very similar. The only change I made was to the site of, uh, size of the widget. So going back to my code, I can see in my desktop, I just made um, some width adjustments to different sections in both the desktop and mobile section. Awesome. So what if you have some CSS that you want your users to customize, like font, maybe color? Um, and that's the great thing about where the design editor and design menu comes in. So let's take a look back at my widget. If I go back to the desktop version, you can see um, that I've added some text styles, some links styles, and button styles here. But one thing I actually want to show you is that we do have the option to have a color picker. So going back to my widget, um, we do have this legend over here that corresponds to the um, chart that actually gets generated when I hit the 
um, calculate button. So if I calculate, I see this chart here and that corresponds to the legend colors. So what if I have a site um, that I, doesn't really just drive with these colors? I can go ahead and change them. And you can see that that actually gets reflected within the widget and will be reflected in the chart once I hit calculate. So let's look at um, how we actually built this within the design menu. So let's go over back to our widget builder and go to design editor. Here are all of the other text and um, button stylings that I've already added. I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the first description here um, and choose the color picker. So we're gonna use the principal payment, principal and interest payment um, as, an as an example. I'm gonna choose um, the color picker as the input type. And this is similarly set up to how I set this up in the content editor for the text and link field. I'm gonna give this a descriptive label. So I did principal payment color. And then I have the option to choose to update the CSS or a variable. Uh, I would recommend using to update the CSS if you know that you're gonna to wanna to be targeting a CSS selector and just making a simple update, maybe to color, um, font. But if you know that you need to use this within the JavaScript, I would recommend using uh, the variable option. So I actually chose to use the variable option and I named my variable principal color and I set it to a default value of pink. So if I actually go back to the HTML and I scroll all the way down um, to where I set this principal and interest, I can see that I just have a span here and I don't have any handlebars. So where exactly am I accessing this variable? Let's go back to our JavaScript. So if you see on line 16, I'm actually um, targeting uh, the CSS using uh, jQuery. So I'm targeting the principal color class. I'm just uh, updating the color attribute of the CSS using data.config, which is our object, and the principal color variable. I'm also gonna go all the way down to the bottom of this code where I'm generating my chart. Here on line 20, 124, you can see that I'm just setting um, a, Similarly to regular JavaScript, I'm placing my variable here um, instead of actually just having some text. I could go and um, target the chart, find the um, a color that represents principal payment, or I can just use my data.config object and the variable similarly to how I would use regular JavaScript. Cool. So now that our um, widget actually looks complete when I hit preview, and I've tested to make sure everything looks fine and functions correctly, I'm actually gonna go over to the settings section. So let's quickly go over settings. Um, here within settings, we have a section for general. Um, this is just gonna have all the information that allows your widget to be easily accessible within the site editor. So I have a widget name um, from the previous widget I created. I had it set to mortgage calc. Maybe now I know that I'm ready to publish and I have a final name, I'm gonna call it mortgage calculator. Uh, I can choose an icon that shows up here um, so that this is the icon that people will see when they search for my widget within the uh, site editor. I have a category um, where the widget will be listed under. Um, and then I have a field here for search tags. So these are all of the words that I think people might search for my widget by. I also have this new toggle to um, load my, use lazy load to uh, load my widget. Um, once I hit the publish button up here in the uh, top right hand side, um, this section will actually become available to me. And this uh, allows me to choose the widget availability. So if I know I'm just testing my widget um, and I just wanna do some tests uh, within the actual site editor, I might set it to private. Um, if I know that I only want this widget to be used internally, I might set it to only have team access. And if I know that I want everyone to have access to this widget, I'll set it to public. Um, and then you have the option to unpublish. Here we have a version section. This works similarly to um, the backup um, and restore for sites. You have a list of all of the versions that you have of the widget and the current version you're on, you're published on. Um, you also have version notes here, and these kind of act like commit messages when you're writing regular code externally. You have the option to preview and restore and edit. The great thing about this version section is that you can hit compare versions and you can go to um, different versions and see the actual changes that you made um, within the code. So we have an HTML, JavaScript, and CSS section. 
On the top hand side, you have quick access to get back to your widget dashboard, a drop down that you can um, toggle between the different widgets. So if you want to look at different code sources, you have the ability to preview your, your widget, you can save uh, and republish. So now that our widget's actually complete, let's jump over to um, the editor and see how this widget interacts in the editor. So um, let's jump over to my first site here. This was the um, first site example that I showed you. Here you can see that I just hit widget and I searched for mortgage calculator and my mortgage calculator showed up in the dropdown. I dragged that over here and I set my uh, down payment, default down payment percentage to 15. Um, and I linked this to um, a nerd wallet uh, interest rate link. But as I mentioned, you can also um, attach these widgets to dynamic pages and to uh, content library data. So let's jump in and see an example of that. Um, here I have a collection. I have a loan type um, with a loan name, a loan description, a down payment percentage field, HOA fee, a link for that inter interest rate link um, that we set up together, and a background image. I have this site here um, that looks completely different than that other site. And this is a dynamic page. Um, so here I have my loan name, loan description, and a mortgage calculator that I dropped in here. And it's not currently tied to anything. So if I go and right click and connect to data, similarly to any other widget, I get all of the fields that I um, uh, set that toggle on to enable um, to connect to data. So as a reminder, I just went into um, my widget. Let's go back in here um, for this link here. I just toggled this on, and this allows me to see that field within that menu to connect to data. So based on my collection, I'm going to set my default down percentage to the field. I'm going to also set my HOA fees, and I'm going to set my interest rate info link. And my contact lender, I'm actually going to set to the phone number that's within my content library. I'm going to hit Done. And I can see that already for my VA loan, my interest rate has uh, down payment percentage has actually updated to zero. If I toggle over to um, FHA loan, maybe I'll see that my down payment percentage has uh, changed to 3.5. And if I go to this Mayfair Homes, which is just a community um, that may offer their own mortgage um, pricing, I can see my down payment percentage is back to 20, but they updated the HOA fees to 150. Yeah, so um, let's just go over what we did today. So as we did together, we built this mortgage calculator using HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. Um, we connected uh, data um, from the content library using handlebars and uh, variables and also the data.config uh, object. And then we were able to manipulate the CSS using fields that within the design menu over here. Um, this uh, example that I built is a standard widget for this, and that was just built for this demo. But your widget can be more simplistic or complex. Uh, we have a handful of other um, helper objects for JavaScript um, and handlebar examples in our documentation. And you can also access all that documentation um, by clicking this documentation button over here, and that will open in a new window. Um, so yeah, that's really the demo. Um, we can go over to a quick Q&A session. And I will just check, see what kind of questions we're getting. Um, so let's take a look. Um, so we have a question from Bill. Um, I assume there is no risk to uh, the existing widget if we open a widget for editing copy all the code, then paste that into a new widget to make something similar. Um, yeah, so um, there is no risk um, in just taking code from an existing widget and copying it over. Um, I would say that um, the only thing you have to be wary of is um, if we actually look back at our widget, uh, if you're going to be targeting your widget using CSS. So if I go back in here, you can see that I targeted my widget class here, and that's unique for each widget. So that's actually going to change if you copy over into a new widget. Um, let's see what the next question is. Uh, 
Um, someone wants to know, is there a way to make an API call from within the widget builder? For example, I want to get a, vid a video from a YouTube channel using their API. Yeah, so you can um, make any API calls um, that using JavaScript. Um, if you do have any backend code that you want to um, collect or, or use, um, we actually do have an API that's listed in our documentation um, where you can host uh, code externally and load it using our JavaScript API. Um, one thing I do want to note is that um, our Juda APIs are not able to be used within the widget builder. Um, so I would recommend um, hosting code externally and using that external um, apps API to load um, and load that within the widget builder. Um, so another question from Bill, um, if a, I build a widget that will be in the header or footer, is there a way for me to detect what page is being displayed each time the widget is rendered other than using JS to detect the URL? Um, yeah, so actually that's a really great question. I'm actually going to go back to um, our documentation here. Um, and I actually want to point this out. So we do have a lot of JavaScript uh, helper objects. Um, and one here that we actually have is page name. Um, so you do a data.page um, and it will give you the current page name and you can uh, manipulate that in any way, uh, append it to a different URL um, or just the domain structure that you already have. Um, and uh, I do want to mention that this widget, uh, this workshop will be re is recorded so that you can watch it later. Um, you can access it um, by visiting resources.duda.co slash webinar or webinars. Um, another question, is it possible to edit the widget or copy to edit the widgets within Duda? So like the accordant widget can be edited and made into a new widget. Um, yeah, so um, the only way to actually copy a custom widget right now is to take the code and make a new widget. Um, if you do need to make any updates, uh, you would have to do that within the widget builder um, because it does load as a uh, unique object uh, within the HTML. Um, so you can make any changes that you make within the widget builder. And then when you republish, you do have the option to um, auto update all existing widgets on your site, or you can leave that turn off. And um, that will actually just, you will actually have to go and update a uh, widget by widget um, on your sites. Um, another question, is it possible to use React or Vue to create widgets? Um, yeah, so our um, JavaScript section within the widget builder just uses standard JavaScript or jQuery. Um, but if you know you want to use an external um, library like React um, or Vue, you can host that code externally um, and use that um, API to actually load the code um, within the widget builder. Um, Sophia, can I copy or edit a widget that Duda built? Um, so we actually don't have the availability to show all of the widget code um, that uh, Duda built, um, but you can um, go into the HTML um, using developer mode and uh, take a look at how that um, widget is set up within the HTML. Um, and you can kind of figure out how to um, manipulate the JavaScript and add all of those values into the content editor or design menu. Um, yeah, um, let's see if there's going to be any more questions. Um, is there any way to add list inputs inside of a group, inside the group input in the content editor? Um, let's see. Is there any way to add list input inside of the group input in the content editor? Um, so you do have the availability to um, have a different, uh, like a list created within um, the editor. So if we go back here and hit content editor, we do have a um, checkbox. Um, so you can use that. Um, and we do have a list. Um, but if we add list and if we add a group, we can actually do this live. If I try to drag that list into my group, I don't have the availability to do that. So um, that's actually something that's not currently supported. But uh, I will actually share that with our uh, product team because that does sound like a pretty cool feature. Um, does anybody have any other questions?
Um, okay. We want the flexibility of your page builder with our data that is uh, that is managed by our back office. Our data comes in JSON and is being an, an authorization bearer, and the same token is only exchanged on an OAuth process. Can you handle this? Can we integrate this with your platform? Um, yeah, so our standard JavaScript and HTML and CSS sections can't automatically support that. Um, it really depends on how your code's gonna be set up. Um, if you can add some uh, code that can access all that stuff while using this API to load that code within the JavaScript, um, you can. So you have the option to use that external uh, API to load your code within our widget builder, um, but uh, you will have to do some testing to see if that's something that we actually support based on any security that you have in there. Any other questions? Okay, so I think that's everything that we might have. Um, thanks for joining us for this uh, quick uh, little workshop. Um, we do have a, a workshop that's going to be on uh, August 11th that's going to be about uh, Google Web Vitals. Um, and just as a reminder, this workshop will be available um, at resources.duda.co slash webinars um, afterwards. Um, so thanks, everyone, for um, joining us, and have a good day. <laughs>